Hello, it's great to be here. My name is Karen Lancel. I'm an artist from the Netherlands and collaborating with Herman Maat in the field of art, science and technology. And what we do is creating new forms of meeting places. And we show and design these in museums, universities, uh, digital art labs and city public spaces. Today, I want to share with you... Now, I think, yeah. I want to share with you um, how we think about trust and telepresence. First, some questions. How do you trust someone online? Do you need to see each other in the eyes? Or do you need to touch each other? Shake hands, even hug? How do we trust each other as telepresent and networking bodies? First about telepresent. Telepresence uh, meeting invites us in meeting on a distance through various interfaces like Skype, chat, Twitter, email. Time and space have become irrelevant for feeling close. I withdraw behind my personal mobile technologies with the real-time friends around me, and my real-time friends around me are expanding beyond imagination. Now, this way of meeting we have internalized today. When I walk in the street and I have forgotten this one, I feel disconnected. I don't know how that is for you. William G. Mitchell said about telepresent bodies, disconnection means amputation. I'm part of the networks, and the networks are part of me. I link, therefore I am. So this is part of my body system. Now, what about trust? Trust. In the 90s, we hoped that we got more business deals and fly less through the Internet. Well, the business deals, they become a reality, but flying less, no. And why? Because every business deal needs, at some point, a physical confirmation, like shaking hands or even hug. Touch is undoubtedly the most direct form of communication. Making your body lie is difficult. However, while um, media extend our bodies in space and time, they prevent us from touching. They create a world without touching, a bodiless existence. Now, and that is where we as artists come in. We are interested in how does this socially change us? How does this change our awareness of the other's bodily presence. And how does this change the awareness of my body being present here and now? Can we innovate here? Can we start thinking about embodied trust interfaces? Many philosophers and scientists have stated that touch, face-to-face -face connection, mm, bodily behavior are core components for trust and reciprocity which are foundations for all social structures. So there is urgent need for research in embodied trust interfaces for social and economical sustainability. Today I want to share with you two projects. We um, created with trust embodied interfaces and um, we call them artistic social labs. We invite the audience as co-researcher to experiment and play. Teletrust is the first project. Now, Teletrust deals with the paradox in our social ecosystem. While increasingly demand transparency, we increasingly cover our bodies with personal communication technology. It shows the emotional and social tension dealing with visibility, presence, privacy and trust in our contemporary hybrid cities. Trust on social media platforms such as Facebook is defined in absolute terms like friend or foe. My privacy is your command. Trust in city public spaces depends on transparency and traceability, but although burkas sometimes are allowed, being naked never is. We internalize and cover ourselves with mobile devices, we connect worldwide with seamless technology and digital data fails. 
in the performance teletrust, you are offered an interactive full-body data veil. We have six of them. Its design is inspired by Eastern and Western traditions, like a traditionally monk's habit, a boaka, very hot topic in Holland, Darth Vader, and a classic striped business suit. This data veil is a tangible body interface for scanning online trust. It functions as a second skin. Flexible, invisible touch sensors woven into the smart fabric of the veil transform your body into a tangible interface. By touching your body in the data veil, you meet strangers online through their smartphones. The humidity in my hand connects the sensors, connect to a database on Surfer. Teletrust offers a free app for a dialogue between the data veil and the smartphone. Inside the data veil, you may be unidentifiable, but before disappearing, your portrait is added to an online database. By gently caressing their screens, anonymous smartphone users worldwide can unveil your face. It asks, do you need to see my eyes to trust me? And then the smartphone user will respond. By clicking the record button. Hi, Renz. I would love to trust your electronic blue eyes, but I'm not sure yet. Now, when he speaks to you in, their, in his smartphone, his statement is wirelessly sent to your data veil. You can hear his voice speak to you in your headset. In real-time audio, searching your body in an Hi, intuitive... Renz. Oh. I would love to trust your electronic blue eyes. Hi, Renz. But I'm not sure I would yet. love to trust your electronic blue eyes but I'm not sure yet. It's just to connect as human beings. You have to have some kind of a physical connection. So the face, when I look at you now, I could tell whether you are really telling 100% the truth, <laughs> or 50, or 70, yeah. whatever. So, so in real-time audio, searching your body in into an intuitive interface, you share statements of trust. You caress your smartphone screen and unveil the data veil on face online. Record your voice, send your statement to the data veil. Now, touching your body creates the impression that the voices are coming from inside your body. You seem to embody voices of telepresent, anonymous strangers. Can I trust you now? Am I here with you? And in whose body? This is the spatial triangle it makes between the data veil, audience using smartphones, and the portraits and the statements are both shown on the urban screen. It's a gender-neutral data veil. One size fits all. And we host it in a telematic ritual. In the Teletrust research, we look for new parameters for online trust. Stories on privacy and trust from cities worldwide in the database weave into an exchanging narrative. Everyone can wear a data veil. We took it to China, Turkey, Netherlands, Canada, New Zealand, Sweden, in social dynamic public spaces such as city squares, train stations, museums, halls. We collaborated in the data veil design with veil-wearing women in Groningen, and uh, Istanbul, and fashion designer Aziz. And together we created this critically, privately owned sensory space for where one can meet each other. Now, where and how did we invite our audience? In Amsterdam, people are living... Can you hear me? Yeah. In Amsterdam, people are living very individually. They demand extreme transparency. It's in the nature of who we are. In the data veil, however, they often find, to their own surprise, comfort, because it facilitates invisibility. And others will tell us about their experience of socially embodied intimacy by the data veil. Participants says to, say to us, when I touch my body, I'm with others. But when I hold off, I feel alone. 
in electrosmog performance, we had three different time zones involved, Canada, New Zealand and Netherlands. And in, in all three places, we had data fails operating. Participants connected different public spaces. They felt a very hybrid meeting on the edge of being physically and virtually together. One of the participants said to us, I could hear your voice in my skin. I remembered you remembering. My body is your body, which I found very poetic. Here Amersfoort, one participant said, I felt safe inside. I love this power. No one can see me watching and I can see it all, like I was a walking surveillance monitor. In the Chomi Pavilion, the image of the disappeared veiled body contradicts the transparent architecture. The participant's body is being revealed as an online presence, embodying the transparent network. Now, last year we were here at ICEA conference and showed the data veil. Um, many cultures wore it actually on the Taksim Square. Veil wearing and non veil wearing women, traditional and fashionable women, Saudi Arabian and Iranian tourists, European business people, students. And a su one Saudi Arabian participant told us thinking about veil wearing, this interactive data veil can truly bridge our Eastern and Western traditions. This is an overview of the institutions we collaborate to find these new forms of innovation. Art platforms, museums, art funds, universities, um, art labs. And with all this support from many experimental and courageous places, we can move forward. Now, what we did learn, what we what did we learn over the years by carrying this data fail? There came many, many perspectives. Socially, emotionally, spatially, economically, politically. And one thing that became very clear to us, is whereas in the beginning people got excited like, oh, I have this data fail and it connects to the internet, 2009. Now in 2012 people will much more emphasize um, the maturing of the social media. They will say to us and tell us about um, the feeling that they can enter a privacy design to reflect their feelings about um, being alone together in the network. And these ideas we took in the next project, Saving Face, in which we reintroduce touch-related perception in the digital and public domain with the help of a personal touch body scan. <laughs> she is touching the phone and making a picture, and now, by caressing her face softly, she scans her face. Scanning and caressing become the same in Saving Face. And when she touches on safe, the part she scans will merge with the faces of all previous participants. And this portrait on the urban screen shows a temporary identity further transforming through every face caressing act. And this temporary identity is sent to the user as a saving face networked passport. It's a funny, happy game. It shows interaction of personal histories. It can be a love app, sh touching and caressing each other's face. And it shows on networked urban screens. Um, end of this year, it will be the Amber platform here uh, in Istanbul. And hopefully we show it on the ferry, on the Bosporus, inviting people from the Asian and European part. Now, these were teletrust and saving face, in which we ask, can we design embodied interfaces for trust? Future presence in technology uh, demand for new configurations of space, time, and embodied relationships. Because in processes in which we search for trust, we feel fear and desire. Searching for trust is a vulnerable process in which touch is the most direct form of communication. And as artists, we want to design for these processes, vulnerable, intuitive, sensitive, embodied. 
in which we can reintroduce the warm and familiar body in telepresence. Processes in which caressing is a form of scanning, and in which our bodies are antennas for trust. Thank you.